This isn't meant to be a tutorial. I just wanted to show you what real European Earth is. Uh, Earthers are. Uh, well, the topic isn't as simple as you may think. The way the continent was shaped wasn't identical for all regions. There is no generic European Earth. The many different minerals you find are the same all over Europe. Different regions have different soil. With regards to this, there's a broad variety of colors, consistency and grain sizes. The soil I picked up in the Lake Constance area isn't as finely grained as it is in our new habitat. The way the soil mm, behaves is rather static, while the soil I collected here is more like a liquid. On the other hand, those very fine grains easily stick together and look like they were much bigger grains. That isn't the case with this soil, at least not as long as it's dry. Here you see my first prey from around a new home. It contains sand, gravel and stones of different sizes. The dirt you saw before was treated the same way, but I forgot to take pics when I worked with it. The tools I used were this colander and the tea strainer. A flower sifter would have been useful too, but I haven't got one. First thing to do was removing the stones. The soil was collected after the wheat harvest. That's why it also contained many pieces of straw, grass, tiny roots, twigs and even wood. Most but not all of them were removed while sifting and put aside for further use. Those that were small enough are left in the different piles of sand, gravel and stones. We'll take a closer look in a couple of minutes. Only this much. If I think there are too many of them while I'm sprinkling dirt or pebbles on a dio base, I can still use tweezers to remove what I don't like. I realized that there were at least two different colors of soil here. One is a light khaki while the other one is beige. It was worth collecting both of them because I like to have a choice. I don't want to paint the earth tones. All I want to do is using pigments to bring diabase, vehicles and figures together. Since the consistency of these two soils is identical, I guess they come from different layers. And then there was an ochre colored fine sand. I picked up about a kilogram and now I've got three different colors and two different consistencies. Here you can see how the finely grained particles stick together as if they were cemented. They'll fall apart the moment you apply the lightest force, like blowing or touching them with a toothpick. They will stick together forever if you use diluted PVA glue to attach them to a dio or a vehicle. The sand contains fine last grains and I left it like that. They'll work as a binder while applying the sand with PVA glue. This is a mix of all three kinds of dirt in about equal portions. They'll definitely be used for it. Let's talk about the bits of plants I had removed previously. You could bend them, but that would be a waste. I chopped them. Then surface mulch I will cover the ground around trees and forest scenes. They can also be used along with mud on vehicles. quite happy that I had this empty glass with a grinder. It contained sea salt and after it was empty we wanted to throw it away. Now it'll be used to apply the mulch and I can grind the larger bits while doing this. I noticed a dark spot on a field after the wheat harvest, so I took a look to find out what it was. It was a khaki colored soil mix of charcoal bits of different sizes. There wasn't a fire before the harvest and none thereafter. This must have been brought to the surface by plowing the field. I don't know how old these charcoal particles are, but I like the way they affected the soil's color. I picked up as much as possible, but it was just enough to fill this small glass.
These are wheat roots. They're tiny and can be used as twigs on trees or roots in dugouts, trenches, shell craters and so on. I couldn't resist and picked up many of these rocks. They come in many different colors depending on the different minerals. I'll use them as real rocks on dios. That'll make the dios quite heavy, but up to now all my attempts at sculpting rocks ended disastrously. So I'll cheat and use real rocks from now on. I'll change the colors when necessary, but I'll use translucent paints. I don't want to lose the original appearance. The things you find when you're walking through the forest or along meadows and fields are really useful. They only cost you a couple of hours when you separate the different contents. They look realistic because they are the real stuff. If you use them instead of expensive European earth pigments, you'll save tons of money. The appearance of real earth depends on the minerals it contains. It hasn't got too much to do with the continent it comes from. Even red earth with a high percentage of iron or more precisely rust can be found in Europe. It can also be black as a result of volcanic eruptions millions of years ago. In that case it's ground basalt. A second kind of black earth is bog and it can be found in many regions. The stuff you saw in this video will last for countless dios. Please don't tell me you don't have time to do this. Our hobby is time consuming and we usually do it to, well, waste time. It won't do you no harm to leave the hobby room and collect some dirt. If you're afraid of bacteria or other small organisms, you can put this all in the oven at about 80 degrees Celsius. Believe me, it's a waste of time, money and energy. If you think there may be fertile particles in the dirt, rest assured that the glue you'll use for the application will kill all life completely. If you need soil of a specific color, you can use ground pastoral shocks and mix it with the soil to achieve the desired tone. Those of you who have a dog know it and those without a dog will learn to appreciate it. The main advantage of collecting your own soil is that it makes you leave the bench and breathe fresh air. That's priceless. Hang on, there's more. I collected many dead leaves too. If you're into gluing foliage onto your trees bit by bit, you can use these and the punch tools that provide you with perfectly shaped leaves. That's too much work for my personal taste, but there's use for them. They'll serve as what they are. All I did was removing these parts. Then I just crumbled them till they were small enough to be used on or around trees. If you want to use them as summer leaves, you'll have to color them. I won't do that because I use herbs or different teas for that purpose. There'll be a short video on that topic soon. That's all, folks.